Okay, students, in this class, we will learn how to use the if, else, if, and else statement. So all of these things are coupled together as a single control statement. Now, let me show you two ways of the application of if, else, if, and else statement. Now, for most, what I will do is, I will just run the command using a simple JavaScript file and then show the application using the browser with probably a simple application to understand, a app to understand the logic. So having mentioned this, I place the exclamatory mark, I get the boilerplate. So let me change the title. Example to understand the if else if and else statement. So probably I'm going to need a CSS file. Link rel is equal to style sheet. Type is equal to text slash CSS and then href is equal to CSS slash the same CSS file. So now let me give the script so now imagine you are booking a hotel and the hotel has a price for a day and you would want to know what would it take for you to stay in this hotel for three days or four days or five days and so on and so forth. So if you are giving in the day, the number of days of your stay, the price should be displayed. I know, of course, you might be wondering, oh, it's a straightforward, what big deal? If we know the price for one particular day, we can multiply it by the number of days. But you have to take into account that many of these hotels have got uh, GST, they have got VAT, and all of these uh, taxations are there. So in that case, the price that they say that you would be paying would not be the exact price that you would actually be paying at the front desk. So you have to cater to all of those things. So we are going to write a simple program and we will have to find out the pricing. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So having mentioned this, let me just uh, start off with using the var. So day is equal to say for example you want to stay in this hotel for five days now comes the start of the control statement so I'm giving a common statement this is where we check the conditions using the control statements so I'm going to start my if so if day I'm going to use three equal to sign. I have already explained to you why the three equal to sign is different from the two equal to signs. Whenever I say three equal to signs, it not only checks for the pattern, but also the data type. So have that in mind. So if day is equal to say five, this is the condition. I'm going to give a, a variable here. So a calculation. So variable cost is equal to 5 multiplied with say every day the cost is 100 US dollars 100 US dollars plus so this is one more parenthesis I'm giving 5 multiplied with 100 times imagine that they are charging for every day they are charging uh, additional tax 0.02 percentage 0.02 percentage added to the exact amount so it's five hundred dollars plus this uh, five times five hundred times zero point zero two percentage so that amount will also be have to be placed so let me just go to the calculator and uh, show that thing so this is five hundred that has to be multiplied with zero point zero two so ten dollars additionally have to be added now this is a simple taxation policy that I am showing you here. Now using expressions you can complicate this however you want depending upon the requirements. So this is just a simple thing for easy understanding of the exact concept. Now I want to get the cost 
displayed. So I'm going to say document dot write of the cost. Now you can say you can give a comment statement. So this is the cost to pay. And then a concatenation sign. Probably I'll give a space and then the variable. Okay, so that looks fine. Now, we are not getting any input from the user. All I'm doing is just printing it up using the script. So, given the variable is declared and the expressions are calculated and the output is displayed. So, let me go and refresh this. It says this is the cost you pay 510. You see that? Now, this is for five days. But I just mentioned to you it can be three days, it can be four days and so on and so forth. So what we need to do is we need to just uh, copy this up and paste this here. And the only thing is that we can't use the if statement here. We are going to say else if. Else space if. If it is equal to 4. If it is equal to 4. Then this has to change. Right? 4 times 4 times. Say since the day is five year and year it is three, uh, year it is four, definitely the hotel is going to charge uh, more tax because the larger the days that you stay, the better for them. So they will give some waiver in case of the taxation that they will place on the room rent, right? That is the way they operate. So in this case, it's not going to be 0 0.02, it's going to be 0 0.03 and the cost is displayed. Now you can't run it, I don't want to run it now. If in case this entire thing fails, then comes the else statement. So you place in the else and then you just say document, document dot. So that means you're not staying for five days, you're not staying for four days. Then you will have to pay the standard cost. Say you're staying for two days. So that means flat rate you have to pay. So probably I can just say variable cost is equal to say $200. So you pay that $200. So this is a simple program that says if it is five days, this is the money. If it is four days, this is the money. If it is instead of five days or four days, you have to pay this to be the standard. If the first condition fails, the second condition fails, the third condition will come into play. And that is how the if, else if and else statement come into action. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to change it to four days just to show you what's going to happen. So I'll go over here and I'll change it. You see that 412. This is the price that the person is paid. Now, if in case four is actually not there, five is not actually, uh, five is not there, then the loop will come over here. But the point that I wish to bring it to your attention by means of a full-fledged a mini application through the browser. So if in case, if I'm going to give you a, a say one, so you can go to the browser and check it up. So you see that 200. In that case, the value four is in there, the value five is in there, but the value one is there, but still the loop comes and executes. That's the beauty of this uh, control statement. Even though four and five isn't there, but I've given there one, you should give a value there. If you don't give a value, you will get an exception. As I have already indicated to you in the previous classes, when you don't give a value, you will get an exception thrown, which would be undefined. So we need to give a value. Since a value of one is there, this condition comes into play. So that is the beauty of the else condition. I should say the if, else if, and else. Now, you can actually change this by placing an input box and then you can increase the extensiveness of this particular program by supplying more conditions. Say for example, let me just show that to you by incorporating an input box here. I'm going to say input, input type is equal to text and I give an ID. ID is equal to say name because I know this name would be reflected in the CSS. It's already there in the CSS. That's the reason I'm placing name there. So in this case, label 
please enter the number of days. Please enter your stay. Within bracket, probably you can say number of days. Right? So, that would give you the exact understanding for the client or the person who's going to stay. So you can see that please enter the number of days of your stay. You have a box, you need to enter it. And this is printing. We have to get rid of that. So we need to also give a button there. Button ID is equal to BTN1 and then say submit. So once it gets submitted, we should need to place an on-click event there. So I'm going to say function 1 and that looks good. So if you were to save it and go back and check it out. So this is how it looks. So probably the button is not reflected well because it should be BT and now it would be looking uh, good. Okay, yes, I got it. So when I enter the day, say for example five days, I click on this, I will get the output. So I need to get rid of this. So coming over here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start a function. Function, function one, and then I need to get rid of this and place this right over here and then go over here, I need to gather these content, the input present in name and activate the button. So before that, I would also need to place a h2 tag. h2 id is equal to display. That is critical to give the output. So over here, day in this case I need to get document document dot get element by ID and it's going to be name and it's going to be value there so we got the value and oh yeah the next thing is that we need to also capture the tag so for that where this is equal to document dot query selector document dot query selector of channel display and that is captured and then I will say this dot inner html is equal to so we have to use this every time we are getting the display we have to use this so i'm going to take this off and i'm going to say you know html is equal to this is what is needed this is the cost you pay and I don't need this, I save it. There is one important thing that we need to cater to. I'm going to show you that. Now, when, now this is the screen, right? This is the browser. Now, when you enter the value, you're not going to get the output. In fact, the output that is required, because whenever you enter the value here, the JavaScript language treats it as a string. So have that in mind. So having said that, if I were to say submit, it is going to give me a value, which is the value that we have placed for the else condition. This is what is going to get printed. So if I were to say submit, you can see that because this is the last case scenario where five and four are actually isn't the input provided but that is not so we have already given the value as uh, 5 the reason for that is because the input that we have given here is not actually used for making the comparison that is the biggest issue because we are 
basically comparing a numeric quantity. But if you were to get the type of the value that is being fed into the input box, that is going to be string. So what we need to do is we need to convert that. So I'm going to say var day is equal to parse int. So that is whatever value that is received is converted into a number quantity. So this one would help us. So this conversion is placed here and now the variable day is now a numeric quantity. So that is critical. So now that we have performed the conversion, we can simply go there and place 5 there and say submit. So you see that this is the cost you pay, 510. So now you say 4 and submit. It says 412. That's because we did not place the all important this.inHTML. So I'm going over here. I'm taking this off. I'm going to paste this. And then I will take this off and I will paste this. So if you are day the number of days is anything else other than 5 and 4, you're going to get this. So I'm going to save this. So let me go back and refresh it. So I'm going to say 2 days and submit. You see that? This is the cost you pay. So the idea is you can, in fact, give many such else if conditions. Say, for example, your entry is for 10 days. So what you can do is you can just say copy that and paste it. So if the number of days is equal to say 10 days, right? So all you need to do is just say 10 year and then change it. As I mentioned to you, change the tax to 0 0.02 and this is going to be 10 and you're going to save it. So I'm going to show you how this is working beautifully. So go over here, you're giving 10 days and then this is the cost you pay, 10.20. So this is a beautiful program that is showing you how you can use if, else if and else condition to suitably direct the control to the requirement that is actually placed in the program. So having mentioned this, I'm going to show you another alternative how we can change the entire control statement